Hey, obviously, uh, this game was uh, special for a lot of reasons, for a lot of people. I know for me personally, you know, you look behind the bench, you got Coach Black's wife and son Jason at the game, and TJ Forge coming in. I look upstairs, the Lost Dodds is there. Um, always kind of hesitate mentioning people individually because, you know, you'll piss somebody off, but, uh, you know, who cares? Uh, <laughs> You know, one time I was trying to mention my daughters and I forgot one of them. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, but obviously rec sports and everybody that works here at Gregory, no way we can pull this off. This is the home of Texas volleyball. It's the rec center. and um, we, we, we understand they were nothing short of perfect, all the people we worked with. I um, want to thank them. You know, Rob Lazar did a great job bringing the baskets over and all the stuff Rob always does. Again, I know I'm going to forget people, but these were ones that I really wanted to mention. Uh, with our administration, you know, President Hartzell, and uh, CDC and Sarah and, and everybody that just made the game possible. Um, we don't take this for granted. Uh, the party at the tower was pretty cool. I went over there. and uh, So just a lot of things went into this. It wasn't me, it wasn't Marcus. It was everybody that did this. Um, Lauren does a great job here in marketing as well as everybody that works with Lauren and, and uh, for her and the people Lauren works for. So um, all the people uh, that, that made the facilities, it was just special. And then above all, I know I've forgotten people, I'm sorry, but the, the students. Um, you know, I, the, the minutes that I was sitting around thinking about taking this job, and I'm sure the minutes Marcus was sitting around thinking about where he was going to go, I just always had this vision for this place that where we could create a home court advantage. And I think tonight was a great step in the right direction. And the message to the students is thank you and come check out the Irwin Center. Uh, we can have the same same situation, I promise. We, we, we can have a, a darty over there too. Um, and so Friday, 6 o'clock, next game, students, please give us another chance. Come out, and we'll all come back over here to Gregory and watch the volleyball team win, you know, after we, uh, we play on, on Friday. So above all, thank you. A lot of work went into this. People that I probably don't even know probably worked 20-hour days to pull this off. It's hard to have a basketball game here. Um, Sam Houston State, thank you for agreeing to play the game. Hooten didn't have to do this, um, but he did, and we appreciate it. We, we cheer for those guys. I think that's a team that will compete for the conference championship. Felt like a March team to me. So, thank you. Questions for Marcus, please. Marcus. Joe, go ahead. Marcus, uh, their coach said that they saw your shooting percentages here and tried to limit you from getting in the paint and make you shoot threes. So, when you got it going, was that like finally the lights on and it felt like what you had wanted to do all season? Uh, yeah, you know, um, definitely it's nice to see the ball go in the net. Um, might have to ask coach to play a couple more games than Gregory, but uh, you know, uh, it was definitely nice to see the ball go in. But um, you know, that definitely hasn't been my focus, um, you know, throughout the season. I know uh, maybe outside voices and stuff, maybe thinking and looking at it, and even the other teams said, you know, looking at it as struggles. But um, really, I've I, I just been focused on doing whatever it takes to win and, and, and being a better basketball player for my teammates. So you know, tonight just happened to be the night that that shots were falling and. My, conti my teammates continue to have you know, confidence in me. Coach and the whole staff continues to have confidence in me. Um, and tonight was kind of just a product of that. And you know, we're going to keep going and keep moving forward. Brian, Marcus, along those lines, you played so well defensively the other night. Um, and that's not, you're right. A lot of people were looking at those stats and going, hey, what's going on there? I mean, how, how has it been these first six games to, to have? Because what he wants is a totally different way of thinking. Almost. Right. Well, you know, a big a big part of the reason why you know I came here is is because of coach and the staff and you know the accountability I knew they were gonna you know hold to, hold me to and to be a better player and a lot of that came on the defensive end and you know that's definitely been a primary focus you know that's the biggest thing the biggest key to winning we know is you know not not every night shots are gonna fall but we can control our effort and our defense every single night so it definitely has been a huge emphasis for me just making sure I'm the best player I can be on that side of the ball but. Like I said, my, my coaches and my teammates continue to have confidence in me, and, and they knew that the ball would drop one day, and tonight just happened to be that night. Ross? Is this just a night after all the other things you've done to facilitate, play defense, and you decide, or Chris decide, open up a little bit offensively? Uh, no, it's the beautiful, it's the beautiful part of, of, of our offense. You know, we, we, we spread it out. Each guy, obviously, we, we all know the talent that, that our team has and the ability of all our players. So. Any given night, you know, whenever another team has a game plan, it's going to be hard to stop, you know, all of us. So tonight just just happened to be my night, and like I said, coach and my teammates never stop believing in me, never stop, you know, giving me confidence. So this wasn't a today thing; um, it's an everyday thing. Jordan, the students really showed out today with just energy. How does that affect your play? Um, you know, it's it's huge. It's huge. Um, just getting that energy from them. Um, being able to you know go on runs and make the other team call timeout and, and, and hear them get loud you know obviously coming off our COVID year 
nobody has been able to, you know, kind of feel that and have that atmosphere in a while. So it was really fun tonight to soak that in and kind of like Coach said, you know, let's keep do let's keep building and let's keep doing it. We want I want to see um, the students there on Friday. You know, we're gonna keep playing hard, um, keep playing for them, keep playing for each other. So. You know, we're looking to build this thing to where, you know, we have one of the best home court advantages in the Big 12 and, and in the country. So I'm um, just looking to bring that to Irwin Center. And thank you to the students for coming out. It was a lot of fun. Kirk? Yeah, did it seem a lot louder than like 3,400 fans inside? <laughs> definitely, definitely. It, like? um, it, it was it was extremely loud. There's points, you know, where, you know, you couldn't hear yourself. I'm kind of egging them on to make some noise. And I'm like, you know, that's pretty loud right there. So um, it was definitely fun. Uh, um, one of the best environments I've been in in my collegiate career so far. So it was definitely fun to play here tonight. Chip, um, Marcus, what's the strength of this team right now and, and where do you feel like you, you all have the most work to do? Uh, I think, you know, our strength is <clears throat> definitely just being together and um, locking in on the defensive end. I think we have lapses sometimes. You know, we can always get better. It's a long season and we have a long road to go. But, you know, I think when it's really come down to it and it's really crunch time, we do a good job of locking in with each other and, you know, being able to get stops. Um, we just have to do a better job of, you know, making that consistent, putting a full 40 minutes together as a team um, so that, you know, we can play a complete game and, and keep moving forward on our journey. One last one for Marcus. Kirk? Yeah, uh, Coach Hoot said uh, their game plan was to make you shoot threes. I guess you got to spoil their plans. So <laughs> take that personal or what? Uh, no, not personal at all. Um, kind of like you were saying, you know, teams probably looking at, you know, scouting report, look at my percentages for the season. They may think that, you know, um, I'm struggling or, or I can't shoot. And if that's what it is, and that's what it is. Um, we're going to continue to play our game and, and um, you know, come out come out with a win. Thank you, sir. Some questions for Coach, please? Thank you, guys. I know you believe in positionless stuff. Is he the point guard, do you think? Yeah, we got playmakers. I don't. I've never understood what point guard is. Coach Knight would always say, if you can dribble, pass, and shoot, you're a guard. If you can't, you're a forward. <laughs> I mean, okay, the, the guy that literally makes makes it go. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, Marcus and Ramey and Devin, um, you know, have some expectations in their journeys to be facilitators, playmakers. It's that assist to, <laughs> assist to turnover ratio that we're looking for. Certainly, Timmy can be a playmaker from all the different positions that he plays. Um, yeah, I, I'm not trying to shy away from the question, but I think, uh, I mean, you know, Baylor won it last year, right? And uh, who was the point guard? Was it Butler, Mitchell? I don't know. A couple years ago, we played for it. And I don't know if it was Mooney or Moretti or Culver. I mean, so you, you got to have uh, different playmaking guards. If, I know we were at Gregory tonight, and so, but the days of like, one can dribble, two can shoot, three can rebound, four can screen, and five can Lock. make a sky hook. Those days are over. Joe, when you first got here, you did a lot to go reach out to students, organizations, all the different. You, you laid the groundwork. Was it nice to see that that effort that you put in was returned with their presence tonight? Yeah, no doubt. I'm very thankful. You know, we're in early stages too. You know, like. I just think one of the biggest words is expectations, and our expectations internally are really, really high. We we believe that we can create a basketball home court advantage here, and, uh, but it takes a lot of time and work and relationships, so, you know, we have to deliver. So we said we were going to have a party at the Tower, and we did. We said we were going to play a game at Gregory, and we did. Um, we said we we're going to play hard every night, and we will. Uh, we didn't say we we're going to win every game. We didn't say we we're perfect, uh, but we're going to represent the school hard. Um, we're in the early stages of developing relationships with the students, but it's going really great. And uh, I went over there to the darty for a while. I didn't know what a darty was until uh, me and Brock did the fireside chat. I love that word, man. Uh, darty. Um, but no, it was fun over there. There was, there was some energy. It wasn't like just guys were standing in line, girls were trying to get a free meal at the food truck. There was there was an energy over there. You kind of felt like there's a basketball game tonight, so it was awesome. Nick. Yeah, Chris, you mentioned uh, Timmy earlier, and obviously, you know, he pulled up the stat sheet. It seems to be the case every night he's doing something, just proving his versatility. How important is it to have a guy like that that can, you know, play multiple positions, extremely switchable, can pass the ball, just kind of seems to be able to do all those little things for you? Yeah, Timmy's one of the best players in college basketball. I don't mind saying that. It's not like I'm putting pressure on his shoulders he can't handle or he doesn't want. Um, he's a really motivated guy. He's addicted to the game. Him and I share a, a view that that Timmy can uh, that can, Timmy can play in the NBA, and um, 
I think it's a it's a diverse plan, right? It's not just scoring, it's not just rebound, it's not just assists, it's not just defense, it's everything. Um, but I think Timmy literally is kind of a triple double guy. And, um, tonight he did a good job, you know. I don't know four assists. I think with my neck at seven, seven assists and um, rebounded the ball and scored the ball. But he's uh, the other thing about Timmy, and it's like scary good is there's a whole other ceiling, you know. Like I have really high expectations for him, you know. I've coached a lot of great players over the years, guys that you just like, you just don't. You're shocked when they make a human mistake. I'm starting to kind of get in that world with Timmy, where I just like I just I expect almost perfection and. Um, we have a good relationship, and so I, I don't want to speak for him, but I think he understands that I believe in him, um, and um, you know, and I understand how good he is. Chris, what was your favorite part of the party, and is there an area that you want your team to excel in if you're getting beat, you know, on the boards or in the paint, where you can make up for that? Yeah, the basketball uh, question first. Yes, uh, we got to create more turnovers. We got to tonight. We could not turn Sam Houston over as much as we wanted to. Credit them; they're a good team, guys. You know they're going to compete for the championship in the WAC, and now uh, they got a couple guys on there that are play for a long time after college. Uh, and then Hooten's just a, y'all saw it. I mean that's every day with Hooten. That wasn't just because we were at Gregory in a in a sold out crowd. It, that's Hooten. His team's never quit. That's why I was very concerned until the very end of the game. Um, you know I wasn't. Uh, Taking those guys out of the game until I knew that, that's a team that can come back and beat you. That's a sports center. Dun 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 dun. You know, Texas up 14. Watch this. Those things happen. I've been on part of, part of them, and uh, so like that's a good team. Uh, but, on, but on nights where you're getting banged around a little bit in different areas, I think you got to create. You got to make them turn it over. You know, like look if a team's making half their shots. I mean, the idea is maybe not to let them shoot anymore. Uh, if a team's getting rebounds, the idea is maybe not to let them get a rebound. So I was a little disappointed that we couldn't turn them over more. But credit them. We tried a couple times with a press early. They burned us a little bit. And maybe that was me. Maybe I should have stayed aggressive. Um, second part about the darty. Don't y'all love that word? <laughs> uh, I like the lot. I like black a lot. Man, those guys are pretty good. I was in South Congress uh, earlier this summer. Uh, I went to dinner out there, and I saw those guys live. And, um, Charles Attell is a friend of mine. I forget how exactly I got in there. I, don't, I normally don't get into the kind of the hip stuff. No, I'm more of a um, Jenny's little Longhorn guy. But uh, somehow I find myself in this kind of hip spot, a little out of my comfort zone. Uh, but but those guys are good. Those are talented. So the live music, Black Black, I like those guys. Um, they're good. And they just an energy out there, the students. And, uh, you know, it, it was pretty cool out there. Kirk? Yeah, how do you, you're trying to recreate this in a larger arena, you know, how you, you're tapping into it. How do you expand that and make it an every game thing? And it hasn't historically been a basketball town. Well, in my opinion, nothing great happens unless there's emotional attachment. And we got to get it to where the fans and students, they want to come see our team because they, they feel like if they don't show up, you know, they, they're letting us down. And we got to feel like we're, we got to play hard and win or we're letting them down. It's a relationship. You know, think about anything great in life happens with emotion. Uh, that's why on a championship game, and I've been in both of them, the winning locker room's crying with joy and the losing locker room's crying with uh, just defeat. And so there's emotion involved, anything great, emotion. So we've got to get an emotional attachment with our fans. And uh, to do that, you have to have a relationship. So um, I believe we can create that, uh, not only at the Moody year two, but I'm not really a year two guy. You know, I'd, I'd like to do it at the Frank Irwin Center. I'd like to do it Friday night. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm wired a little different. You know, I, I think we can get 16 in there and a couple thousand out. I mean, uh, we'll keep working at it. Uh, we're, we're not going to. You know, I, I'm a no excuse guy, and uh, we're going to get it done. We got a lot of great people here at the university too, with the administration and Lauren and everybody. So we, yeah. we, we feel like we can do some things that maybe the next guy don't, doesn't think we can do. And are you going to have an annual thing here? Is that the plan? If that was my decision, yeah. uh, I would do that. Sometimes I don't really know what my decision is. We're not going to figure that out. But yes, I would like to play this game every year. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think it's the right thing to do. I think we have a lot of home games at this level, so I don't think it slightens the uh, season ticket holders, but that's just my opinion. And I um, also think there might be some different uh, avenues. Tonight was obviously a student game, uh, and I, I agreed with that completely. Um, but maybe in future years it might be a, a different game. Maybe you play this game sometime over the Christmas break and, uh, you know, the Blake Browns of the world can come check out Gregory again. So I, I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I know it felt right. I know our players enjoyed it. I know our students enjoyed it. 
last time I checked, like this whole deal is about the students, right? There's not students, there's not universities, there's not players, there's not sports. So I think I try to make every decision I make every day. What's what's right for the guys? Um, and I think what's right for the students is to play this game. We'll see what happens. Brian, uh, real quick, basketball question. Uh, what what is your message to the guys when they come up, when they when they come out and get all the points in the paint? They had 14 points on the first uh, 20 or 22 out. Yeah, I think a lot of it, it was kind of diverse tonight. It wasn't necessarily our post defense, but it was some uh, individual defense. You know about our team or theirs? Their team. Yeah, That's yeah. Though we were getting beat on drill penetration a little bit. Um, I think denying the fact that there was some emotion in the game would not be uh, truthful, too. I mean, there was. Like, I, I'm not one of these guys going to stand up here and say, like, you know, I mean, you, you guys saw it. It's like when you take a team to the NCAA tournament for the first time, it feels different. You go down to Kansas City, it feels different. You go to Allen Fieldhouse, it feels different. So. Um, and I think some of it uh, was maybe, I'm not going to say nerves because we got grown men, but it was just a little different. But I thought we calmed down pretty good. You know, I was pleased with the end of the first half. We got uh, six consecutive stops, I think. Um, so that's that's great defense. We were up 10 at half, but it felt like it might have been closer than that. Uh, and then the second half, I thought we took care of the game till the very end. Christina, last one. Um, Coach, how many minutes of good basketball do you think the team played tonight? Yeah, I'm normally good at that. Tonight was a little uh, – I don't know, Sam Houston's really good. I don't, I can't really look at it like, you know, I, I, I'm just really pleased to win this game. I can't tell you how much respect I have for Jason Hoot and Sam Houston State. I graduated from high school at Sam Houston State in their gym in the Woodlands. We went down 45 north. I've always been a Bearcat fan. Bob Marlin, Hooten's doing a great job. Uh, but I, I think we beat a good team tonight in, in a unique environment. So um, to say that we only played good 34, then that might be – disrespecting them six minutes, and I'm not going to do that. I'm really pleased for this win. I think we beat a good team. I think that team will be a factor in March. So, did you guys hear about my shoes, man? Yeah, let's, let's no, start the shoes. Dude, so where do we get them, by the way? Yeah. So, these are unbelievable. They're shoes to honor uh, Gregory. I think that's the winning percentage over time. That's the window panes. Inside, I've got the championships. And my other shoe, I've got all the coaches, the coach tier. Um, I think is that the stained glass? Yes. The yeah. Stained glass is great. These things are, I mean, um, guys like me don't don't wear stuff like this. <laughs> but these are pretty cool. And they're going to be available to the public? I don't think so. Shoes? Nah. When did, when, did, spirit shoes? when did Nike come through with those? Yeah, this is, we got a great relationship with Nike. Uh, but I don't think this was Nike. I think this was somewhere, I don't know what this was. We <laughs> got, got the commutative edition. Say, so why'd you give in and play? Besides you were. Pretty cool, I'm 12. Why'd you end up giving in and playing Hooten? 11 and a half growing up, and then my shoes were always tight, and then somebody told me when you get older, your foot gets bigger. <laughs> didn't, didn't know that. Uh, so out of curiosity, why'd you end up giving in and playing Hooten? He said he'd been working on you playing your team for years, and you never wanted to. No, he said he, he broke you. What, what broke you? I don't like to play friends. Uh, I just don't like um, that guy. I like that, I like that guy. And then Chris Mudge, you guys know he was a student manager here and Rick Barnes and one of the best coaches. Mudge is a big time coach. So I don't like doing that if I can avoid it. But you coach long enough, you got a lot of friends, so you have to play people. Um, but yeah, if it was my choice, I wouldn't play people I like. Uh, so that, that, I agree with who. I don't, I don't want to play them. I thought it was a great game. And they're, they're good. I appreciate them coming down here and playing this game. They didn't have to do this. You know, the locker room's a little unique. The, shoot around, obviously the floor was taped up. I think we had a couple out of bounds tonight. So he didn't have to do this, but he did. And we're super appreciative. And uh, maybe we get the program to the point one day we could return a favor somewhere for him. Flag, Thank you. Flag your kind of player? Huh? Flag your kind of player? Right. Yes, yeah. And uh, 11, uh, 11's my kind of guy. I love 11. I, right. When I scout, I try to watch the first couple games without looking at the stat sheet or looking at anything. I just want to watch the game, see what I think. Then I'll go back, yeah. read some stuff. And I, I, Immediately, number 11 is my kind of guy, man. We have double double tonight. He's a tough dude, number 11. But all, all those guys are yeah. good players. But I, I like 11. If 11 has a twin brother, wants to come to Texas, we'll take him. <laughs> <laughs>